from government college university in Hyderabad again there with you. We have already studied about the theme of SIDA in our class lecture. So that will be our second lecture. We have discussed or we are discussing the vascular plants nowadays. We have discussed the silopsids, the lycopsids as well as the phenopsids. But in all of these lectures, we have discussed and we say again and again some terms about the stellar system that somewhere the protozylum was present, somewhere the different type of the stellar system were there. So first of all, we must know about the stellar system, that what is the stellar system, what is the steam and what it works and how it works in evolutionary tendency means the phylogeny. Now, today we will discuss the stellar system and in the stellar system, we will see that what is the stellar system. You know that the vascular plants contain the vascular tissues and you also know about it. The vascular tissues are the xylem and phloem and these xylem and phloem combine with college the vascular bundles and these vascular bundles present in the central region of the plant. We know about it that if we will take or we want to study the internal organs of the anatomy or the histology of the plant organs of the living organism, we study it by cutting their sections. There are mainly two ways of study by cutting these internal organs either it is horizontally but the horizontal section which is called the transfer sections always take if a structure is uniform from one end to the another end if the structure is uniform then we will get the horizontal section of this structure of that organ so study that what is the first layer and what is inside it, what is inside, inside it, up to the central region. Now, if the internal structure is not uniform, internally like my body, here is something, there is something, there is something, there is something. So we don't take the transfer section, we take the longitudinal section. But the plants are usually the same from top to bottom. Internally, that's why we usually, not always, but usually take the transfer section of it and whenever we take the transfer section, then we will find the outer region is the outer layer of the tissues, these are the epidermis of the epidermal tissues and these epidermis of the epidermal tissues are mainly made up of the parenchymatous tissues Whenever we get inside it, we will have the another one which is called the cortex. And inside the cortex, this is called the inside the cortex, we have the we have this is structure which is called the endodermis. And inside endodermis, the stellar region is start that is the central core of the plant organ, either it is root or either it is a stem or maybe the wings and the winglets of the leaf, then we will have the pericycle, the outer region of the stream. The pericycle is usually made up of parenchymatous tissues or sometime it is made up of the scarabenchymatous tissues, the hard tissues or the dead cells, lignified cells made up of. Inside it, we have xylem, phloem, or sometimes the parenchymatous tissues, which form the ground tissues. If it is present in the center, it is called a pit. If it is present in the sides of them, the vascular bundle they make or the peristyle, or we may also call them the medullary rays. So, we can say that central cylindrical part of the plant organ, except cortex is called, except cortex is called the steel or pulp. Now, 
what are the components of the steel as I have told you that xylem, clog, sometimes pit, first form tissues of the xylem is are called the protozyon, and then after that the form tissues of the xylem are called metazylem and the same is here in the phloem, the first form phloem called the protophloem and the after that it is called the metaphloem and somewhere whenever these vascular tissues enter in the leaf because in leaf the midrib is the continuation of this stellar region so we call we call them the leaf gaps so after that it will go to, towards the we have already studied in our other early classes in our ninth or in the first year of entry classes that the vascular tissues are the xylem and phloem and the xylem are mainly the water and mineral conducting tissues but most of the tissues of the xylem are lignified dead tissues that's why they also provide a strength to these organs they give the mechanical support to the organs that's why it is it for function for the pillar of it then after that if you will see the xylem tissues the xylem tissues are mainly consist of the tracheids the tracheids are the lignified tissues present here and after that some of the tissues which are called the vessels they are also present we have already studied they are also present but not always in all vascular plant in some plant mostly in angiospermic plant in xylem the vessels are also present with these we have fibrous tissues as well as the parenchymal tissues in collaboration with all these four type of the tissues or three type of the tissues they form a structure and this is structure is called xylem they all combinedly perform the function of the conduction as well as the support of the plant on the other hand side if we go to the phloem the phloem is also the conducting tissue but it conducts mostly the compounds which are formed by the photosynthesis especially the carbohydrate so the tissues they are also made up of the four type of the cells one is called the sieve tube it will see here these are the tubes which have some perforation tube like cells which have some perforation in it and that's why due to these perforation in these transfer walls they are called the sieve tubes with these the parenchymatous tissues are also present these are called the companion cells because the seed cells do not contain the nuclei in them although they are living with these the fibrous tissues are also there as well as the parenchymatous tissues are also there so if you will see that these clone perform the function of the conduction of water mineral but it is not provide the support to the plant then these vascular bundles whenever arrange in a specific manner in the central region this is called the steel and their different manner of the arrangement in the central region gives the type of the steel or we call it the steel of our system so before coming to the steel of our system we just see that there are five main type of the steel either it is protesty or maybe the suffren steel maybe solomon steel or maybe the dictyle steel or the polycyclic steel or maybe the u steel if you will go further the protest steels according to the arrangement of the xylem and phloem or the presence of the leaf gaps as well as the overlapping of the leaf gaps and the arrangement of these type of the tissues in the central region we can also divide this protein into four types the haploesteel actinoesteel palactoesteel and mixed pithesteel we will discuss in detail further then after that if we will go through this the femesteel actinoesteel or amphalo type of this femesteel ectophonic 
as well as the antifoli. The solid is steel and detached steel may be further divided. But if you will see here that this is the primitive type of the primitive steel, that's why all the types of these steels evolved from this primitive steel. If you will go in journal, the type of the steel in sample, the primitive steel is the type of the steel. We have no pieces present. The central core is occupied by the xylem and the phloem is surrounded by it. If we go to the another type of, then when will it modify? Some of the thyroid kind of tissue comes in between in the center of the xylem or in the center of the plant, then it is called pith. It is made up of the parenchymatous tissue and it is surrounded by the xylem or maybe phloem. And the xylem after that surrounded by the flaw. Then, if you will go to this next one, then it will modify, and then what happens? The leaf gaps are present, and it is present, but the phloem or maybe xylem alternate with each other and they are arranged in a parallel manner with the gaps in them. That's why it is called the diphthalic steel. Now, after that, if we go to the Protestee according to the Jeffrey in 1899, six types of these things, but we are not saying we are just to the five types, we are restricted ourselves to the five types. The protestee, the protestee, as I have told you, I have shown you in the figure, the primitive type, xylem is a solid, completely surrounded by the phloem, but no pit is present. I have shown you in the diagram before it. Four types of the protestee. I have told you in the beginning that they are. I will see the first type of the protein that is the haploestein, most primitive type, where the central hole is occupied by the xylem and it is completely surrounded by the plum that is called haploestein, usually found in flagella of the lycopsis. Then, after that, if you will go to the next, that is. Actino is seen. If you will see, again the pith is not present here, but what is going to be happen? The xylem is going to be re-like structure or star-like structure. It is modified, but the phloem is surrounded by it. the modified haploestein, central xylem core with a radiating ribs-like structure, and it is surrounded by the phloem. If we go to the next, then it is palactoestein. If we see the palactoestein, it is little bit at one side because it is still absent. But you will see that the xylem is divided into parallel plates with the parametric tissues as well as the phloem is surrounded by it. So, if we will go to the central core of the xylem, it is divided into number of the plates arranged parallel to each other, phloem alternate to the xylem, and it is found in lycopodium. We have already studied. In the lycopsy. Then, after that, mixed steel. If you will see, that's going to start the end of the type of the steel, which is sapphire steel, because the parenchymatous tissues are going to arise in the center core. It means that it is the preparation, or it is going to be modified, and the pit is originating from here. That's why, but it is scattered, so you cannot see. The parenchymatous tissues is gathered in the center of it and it forms a pit, it is it's still absent, but the carrying of the parenchymatous tissues are also here. So, after that, if you will see, as I told you, the cortex is here. After that, cortex, you will find the uh, oh, sorry, uh, that is epidermis and cortex, and then you will see the pericycle, and after that, pericycle, xylem, plum, and in between the xylem. Long, you will find the parenchymatous tissues are scattered. That's why this type of the protein is called mixed pit steel xylem element makes the parenchymatous cell of the pit. The type is found in primitive fossil and living forms. The transition between protein steel to the as we have discussed earlier. Now come to the end of the type, which is the cephalic steel. The cephalic steel has pit. Xylem or maybe the phloem, you will see in the next slides the xylem or phloem is present around with, and after that you will find the phloem.
We see this here written here the tubular vascular region in a pan pancreas central region of the pig. The type of the cephalous T. You will see here the type of the cephalous T with ectopholic cephalous T or anthelic. Antifolic cephalous T. You can see the cortex here. You can see the outer endodermis and then after that the outer pericycle and then outer phloem and then you will see the xylem and then after that you will see the pit. Very simple. But here the simpleness is going to be transformed into a little bit complex structure. The pit is also here but if you will see the phloem is here, then xylem, then phloem, then pericycle. So the layers of the xylem and phloem and if you will see here, here the comparison, if you will see the comparison, here is the xylem, but here after that you will not find the xylem, you will find the phloem here and then after that you will find this xylem, here the first is xylem of the pit and it is surrounded by the phloem, but here the phloem surrounded by xylem and again the phloem is present, so it is divided into layers of the xylem and phloem, but the pit is here. After that, if we come to the another one, there as I have told you, the actively the type, the same is here, as we have discussed earlier, that the pit is here, xylem is here, phloem is here, so on and so forth. Next, here you will see, pit is here, phloem is here, xylem is here, phloem is here again, and that's the same, it is, it is found in Marcella of the cephalus. Uh, uh, we can say the phenoxeta. So let me see. Now you will see the gaps. These are the gaps present here, which we can see the leaf gaps because the gaps are going to be arise in the central core. It is still present, but a gap is present. So this type of the cephalosphere, this is a modified type of the cephalosphere. Then this type of the cephalosphere has some gaps in between the layers of the xylem and phloem. So the solid steel, the type of the cephalic steel, as I have told you, there is an advanced type of that which lets over the overlapping, overlapping of the leaves gaps are solid steel. Means the leaves gaps are not going to overlap with each other here. So maybe ecto folic or antifolic same here, ectofolic is here, antifolic is here. The same is here. So, with the name of the, these are the, with the uh, surfacement scheme, the same is here, but only the changes are in the leaf gaps. So, next, if we we'll go to the next, the tectile stream. Now, the scenario has been completely changed. If overlapping is here, the xylem flow, xylem flow, xylem flow. Xylophrom, as you have studied in your advanced type of the endoscopy, in your first year intro, when you were you have studied the anatomy of the monocot and diacot stems, then you will find this type of the vascular bundles are in or the steel region. More is one type of the cephalosphere of paroxysms, means higher vascular plants, paroxysms. Here, successive gas will be overlapping each other, and then after that, interval position of the vascular tissues will be lateral to such, and it's going to be lateral side. Such a gap is called the meristemes. These laps, as I have told you, are, they are called the meristemes, or maybe somewhere we call them the medullary rays. We call them the medullary rays. After the dictyrotic steel, with many meristemes, look like a cylindrical mesh work. If you will see here, the gaps, the gaps, the gaps are narrow, the gaps are, so we call it the amphi cerebral or the amphi vessel. So next, if we go to the next type, the polycyclic scheme. Here we have one type, same as here, the leaf gaps are overlapping, it's not here, but the leaf gets up to here, the then for pit is here, xylem phloem are here. If you see here that it's going to be some of the parts are going to move away and they are arranged in these manners. 
So these are the polycyclic, most complex organization found in the higher plants. The siphon is steel in a structure such as steel possesses an internal vascular system connected within out siphon is engine. So always found in the nodes, they are all not found just in the plant because they are going to disperse it in the or they are going to move in the lateral uh, organs. That's why they are found in nodes have two or more concentric rings of the vascular tissues. Here we have more than one concentric ring here, maybe solid steel or maybe of the type of the big types of steel. The types may be different, but they are going to arrange here. You can see the ion clump, both are present with them. Now, in the end, as I have told you, the all comes from the protein steel. These all these steels which we have discussed here, all arise from the protein steel. This is actual steel, changes in the structure of the xylem, changes in the structure of the xylem. Here, the gaps are going to be. Produce. These are the siphonous steel. These gaps, narrow steels are formed. This is the tire steel. If you go to here, then we will found the pit, then xylem, then form, then. So, if you will have any gaps, then they are going to be narrow steel, UHT, the cadmium may found and they form. If these type of arrangements here, these type of arrangements here, it means that there are chances of the secondary growth or the formation of the earth. This is all about the steeler system. I think it will help you to understand the vascular plants. That's why we again and again repeat this one. So now you can understand betterly that how the steeler system works and what are the different type of these steels. If we have different type of these steel, we can understand then we can understand easily the origin of the evolution, the phylogeny of the vascular plant as well as the characteristic of the vascular plant. Inshallah, next time we will discuss the last another group of the vascular plant that will be the Theropsida or in general we call them the form. Thank you very much. If you have any query, you can call me or you can message me on WhatsApp. You all have, my dear student, you all have my number and you can ask the question frequently. Thank you.